911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton. Today is a very special day, and it is a special day for a few different reasons. Today's episode might get a little emotional, certainly teared up a little bit, looking through some pictures and just kind of reminiscing on a few things. And that is because today would have been my mom's 69th birthday. Many of you know that come March 4th, I've lost my mom six years ago. And every book that you read, every person you talk to, everybody will tell you the grieving cycle will last approximately six to 12 months and will vary from person to person. And I can tell you that varying process has certainly happened with me. Six years later, there are times where I feel like it's not easier at all. And then there are other times where I feel guilty because it's almost as though I feel like I I forget or like I I don't want to remember. And there are other times where I'm very intentional in remembering my mom and memories. And I'm sure it's the same for you as you sit there and you listen to the tone in my voice and just how emotional it really is when we lose somebody so important to us. I believe one of the hardest things that we will have to go through is losing a parent and as I'm looking through my mom's pictures on her, her last birthday photo, I, I'm recognizing something. I've looked at these pictures thousands of times, and I never noticed this before. But there's one photo in particular where I'm on the bed with my mom, and she's blowing out her candles, and I can see that my lips are pursed as though I wanted to help my mom to blow out the candles for her. My mom had lung cancer, so... At this point, she was on oxygen, and it was almost as though I felt like my mom needed help blowing out her 63rd birthday candles. And I feel like when it comes to the grieving process, we don't really talk about about this too much on on this show, and I apologize for that because I, I know just how important it is. I think every one of us have recognized that there have been people in our lives that are no longer with us. And we've all developed different ways to be able to cope with that. But we don't necessarily talk about it openly because it's hard to talk about. Even as I record this, it's hard for some of these these thoughts and feelings to actually come out of my mouth without me just sounding like, like I'm crying. But I think that the most important thing, at least in my journey, what I have learned after losing my mom, is that there's nothing wrong with you and how you're coping with things. I mentioned the the sort of guilt that I felt at times where there have been days where my mom hasn't crossed my mind at all, whereas there have been other times where my mom crosses my mind several times, several days in a row. And there are a lot of moving pieces in my life right now. And I think that it, apart from these dates, my mom's birthday being today and then March the 4th coming up, and that being her sixth death anniversary. There are other things happening within my life that I I just wish she could be a part of. And I started to think today, some of the other things that I do that maybe other people, and, and let's just air quote this and say professionals, would deem unhealthy, and how wrong I think I think that is. How wrong I think it is for any one individual to say that you're unhealthy for performing, not performing, thinking, feeling, or reacting in a different way when it comes to grief. And I say that because I believe that the depth of our relationships is not something that's universal. And you can think about that depending on the closeness of you versus one parent or the other, or your relationship with your your spouse or your kids, or the closeness now that we have. It doesn't mean that we might love them any less than, but the depth of our relationships from person to person is never the same. And that's because we come into each other's lives, I believe, to serve a certain purpose and to fulfill the purpose for the other people that that we're, we're able and honored to share our time and space with. And one of the things that sticks out for me is I, I look at my cell phone every time that I call my dad. 
and on my favorites list. I have my mom still listed there, and it's never once crossed my mind to delete that from my phone. Now, granted, I'm sure (laughs) that phone number has probably belonged to a million other people by now. But when you don't have a mother anymore, something as simple as being able to just read the word mom, it's comforting. And we don't always realize how something that small will affect us when they're no longer here. But for me, reading that word mom on my phone, it's almost like getting a text message from her, which (laughs) I used to get an obnoxious amount of text messages from her. And I don't think that that type of, and it's intentional, right? I'm sure there have been points in my life where I've thought about you know, my mom being in my phone and sure there's the understanding that she shouldn't be like, what's, what purpose does that serve? I can't call her. But as it, as it relates to us, to you, as you listen to this, what are some other things that maybe you've recognized in your own life that you still hold dear to you? Maybe, maybe you have a partner who you've lost and maybe you have a momentum from them. Momento. (laughs) maybe there's something that you have that you carry with you in your wallet or in your purse. You see, for me, I believe that it is these small things that it almost feels like a warmth, like a gentle hug, like a reminder that we still have them with us. And it really frustrates me when I read these psychology articles and I'm reading from the experts on the people who say the things that you should and shouldn't do because I I believe that people have this superiority complex when it comes to a lot of this information and it's misleading it's really frustrating actually just how misleading it is and I know that the people that you've lost in your own lives they're still, they're still with you in whatever way that is, whether you believe in God, whether you're like me and you're agnostic. And that means that you believe in a higher power, but you are still figuring out what that higher power is. I believe that as we go along this journey, it's important for us to recognize that as we lose people, it's like our circle becomes a little bit smaller. And what happens with our circle when it becomes smaller is we get a little bit closer to the people who are still within that circle. And once in a while, if someone is lucky enough, we expand our circle out just a little bit and we allow someone new to come in. Maybe for you, it's something similar to my story to where three months on the day after my mom passed away, My circle expanded, and my little brother brought my nephew into this world. And I think the more that we have to go through the grief of losing somebody, and although that is incredibly difficult to have to do, having people within our tribe to be able to support us and to be able to share with is so important. I know for my dad, one of the biggest pieces for him is being able to have somebody to lightly talk about memories with. And I say lightly because if ever you pressure him just a little bit too hard, he runs away from it. But there are many times when he's open and he wants to talk about her and share things. And I would encourage you, and and I'm reminding myself of this as I speak of it. If ever you do have somebody who you no longer have in your life, to recognize the other people who you've shared in that relationship with and to remember them too. To remember the people that are still here, that you're still able to communicate with and whether you're close to them or not close to them. Just maybe encourage yourself to push the limits a little bit, no matter how uncomfortable it might feel, 
to reach out to that person and to share in your experience together with the person that you've lost. Because you never know just how meaningful it might be and just how important it is for that other person to have somebody else to share in this with because they might not have anybody. And know that on this very special day, I am sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours. <laughs>